السلام علیکم اینی ون لسننگ می پلیز ریسپونڈ اف یو گائز آر پلیز ریسپونڈ وعلیکم السلام سر وعلیکم السلام اپ بیٹا نام اپ کا منیزا سر منیزا بیٹا وقار العباس سو آل اف یو ویلکم ٹو دس آن لائن لیکچر and i am also using this first time <coughs> excuse me so everyone should mute their mics until i request him or her to unmute or if you have any question you have to raise your hand then we will discuss your question okay okay now and if anyone has any query any question only cr or gr will consider first so first of all i am going to try to share my screen with you guys bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah the most merciful and the most beneficent and countless salutations for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam cr do you have access to my screen everyone now please respond اور اینی ون ایلس جی آر سی آر وکار العباس سکرین بیٹا نظر آ رہی ہے جی سر آ رہی ہے لانگ ٹائم بیکاز آف دس کووڈ نائنٹین اینڈ آئی وش ایوری ون آف یو یور پیرنٹس اینڈ فیملیز آر سیف اینڈ مے اللہ پروٹیکٹ آل آف اس فرسٹ آف آل ٹوڈے وی ول جسٹ ریوائز وٹ وی لرن ان اور فرسٹ تھری اور فور ویکس کلاسز سو بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب زدنی علما ہمارا رب ہمارے علم میں اضافہ فرمائے سو وٹ از پروٹیومکس اور ٹائٹل دا کورس ٹائٹل از پروٹیومکس ایز یو گائز نوز اینڈ آئی ایم جسٹ ٹرائنگ ٹو ری کال یور نالج سو وی کین ہیو ڈیٹا ان اور مائنڈ ٹو اسٹڈی دا فردر ٹاپکس سو پروٹیومکس از دا لارج اسکیل اسٹڈی آف پروٹینس پروٹینس آر وائٹل پارٹس آف لیونگ آرگنیزمس ود مینی فنکشنس and one more thing i want to share here first of all no one should be worry if he or she cannot attend the lecture we will record this lecture and upload this lecture on youtube so don't be worried about that the main purpose should be learning the main purpose the your goal should be learning to understand what is proteomics not to grab the marks okay so proteomics is the large scale study of proteins as we discussed so many times in our classroom what is proteins polypeptides peptides and study of proteins the protein the proteome is the entire set of proteins that is produced or modified by an organism or system so then the question arises what is proteome the proteome is the complement protein found in single cell in a particular environment it is complete collection of proteins encoded by genome of an organism proteomics is the study of composition structure function and interaction of the proteins directing the activities of each living cell so as we discussed i i hope you all recall all these things very efficiently prostatic group so anyone wants to discuss what is prostatic group vakarul abbas you can read from here also Bakaru Labas. Who is with us? Yes, sir. What is prosthetic group? Yes, yes, sir. Prosthetic group is the known amino acid component that is part of the structure of the heteroproteins or conjugated proteins being covalently linked to the apoprotein. Apoprotein. In actual, the known known amino acid part or known protein part is known as prosthetic group that helps to work protein properly or a help in the function of a protein like heme molecule zinc and iron and so many other molecules like zinc finger proteins if anyone remember a zinc finger proteins cannot be functional without zinc ion so these are considered as prosthetic groups or cofactor heme group is also discussed here a prosthetic group consisting of a proto porphyrin ring and a central iron item that is fe 
A cofactor is in uh, Bukaro Labas. Please mute your mic. Thank you. A cofactor is a known protein chemical compound or metallic ion that is required for an enzyme's activity as a catalyst, a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction. We already discussed this in our class in detail about prostatic group and cofactors. What is proteolysis? Proteolysis is the breakdown of proteins. So as we discussed, what is proteolysis, protein degradation, and protein turnover. If you guys remember, in protein degradation, the protein degraded into different components into amino acids for different purposes for different functions so everyone is getting my points hello everyone is getting the point ji ji sir yes sir samajh aa rahi hai beta ke we have to change the medium to urdu sir aa rahi hai yes sir aa rahi hai very good okay so protein degradation is the degradation of proteins into amino acids for the for any functions or for other purposes the protein degradation is very important if we have so many proteins in a cell or in an organism we don't need that we just need a specific number or specific quantity of proteins same about the protein turnover the the organism always carry the protein turnover that is important the number of proteins important for the specific functions that is known as protein turnover when older proteins are broken down into the body they must be replaced this concept is known as protein turnover so as we discussed in our class already that there are two main uh, mechanisms of protein degradation in which one is belongs to the lysosome that is engulfed by that is also known as autophagy process with the uh, fuse of autosomal with the lysosome and uh, formation of autol autolysosomes uh, i am just trying to grab your mind to the data we already studied in our class and and other one is the cytoplasmic complexes as you remember that the birds are generating and just engulf the material to degrade sometimes there are some proteins to degrade there are different types of proteins and all, every protein has different rate of turnover and degradation depends on the nature of the protein and the demand of the cell and the organism so last one is protein synthesis ah, okay protein synthesis occur during the process of translation on ribosomes i hope you guys remember this concept as i explain on board in detail after that we have protogenic amino acids ikra anyone in our class ikra ikra is online okay hamsa we have a student hamsa i remember hamsa ehsan maybe i am here okay but what is protogenic amino acids uh, protogenic uh, amino acids are amino acids uh, jo incorporate biosynthetically uh, proteins ko okay you can explain in urdu no worries during translation i am speaking in urdu okay i was speaking in urdu okay okay protogenic amino acids are amino acids oh, yeah. that are incorporated biosynthetically into proteins during translation i hope you guys remember the concept of translation transcription and how ribosomes helps in the preparation of proteins and synthesis of proteins the word protogenic means protein creating the amino acids help to make proteins there are how many amino acids we have we have 20 amino acids and sometimes people call it 22 amino acids but usually we have 20 amino acids so these helps the the binding of protein and the creating of protein non protogenic amino acids are those that are not naturally encoded or found in the genetic code of any organism despite the use of only 22 amino acids by the translational machinery to assemble proteins and it's a very good information here that over 140 amino acids are known to occur naturally in proteins but we only study about 20 amino acids usually and thousands more may occur in nature or be synthesized in the laboratory i remember we discussed in detail what is how uh, which amino acids or which polypeptides we synthesized in laboratory i also mentioned some <laughs> links of the databases uh please uh, mute your mics everyone please mute your mics okay so we have uh, i also mentioned some uh links here for your knowledge if you are more thirsty about the knowledge you can go there 
to study more. Once again, we are, we are on protein. That is a highly complex substance in living organism. And as we discussed in our classrooms, that protein is the basic unit for every function in our body is performed by proteins with one or an other way. A linear chain of amino acid residues is known as polypeptide and a protein contain, contains at least one long polypeptide. Short, uh, short polypeptide contains less than 20 30 residues. So we also discussed protein, polypeptide and peptide. What is the difference between protein, polypeptide and peptide? Please recall your lectures and refresh your concepts. So all the proteins have interactional studies with proteins, DNA, carbohydrates, lipids and RNA and, and all the functions performed in our body by different molecules and, or, and uh, different uh, macromolecules depends on proteins and interactions of proteins and communications of proteins. So abundance in cell, now we are on abundance in cell. I just uh, uh, touch the concepts so you can recall what we studied already. In our next lecture, we will study a topic briefly as we always did in our classroom. So this lecture is just to recall the basic concept we already discussed in three or four weeks. As I remember, if I miss any topic, you can mention it to me in our groups or in email. So abundance in cell, it has been estimated that every cell size in bacteria contains 2 million proteins per cell. So this is the information about how many cells and how many proteins in how many species are here. So we just discuss it in a very brief manner, like bacteria contains almost 2 million of proteins. And uh, someone is making some points here or it's in my slides or someone just want to paint something here. Who is trying to do this? Okay, Versys has 42 proteins in, his, in their genomes. But uh, don't disturb or don't, please don't disturb this way. It will disturb the lecture. Okay. Now we are on biosensors like we already discussed that different pet peptides and amino acids and polypeptides we can synthesize in lab with the help of experiments. And chemical synthesis, short proteins can also be synthesized chemically by a family of methods known as peptide synthesis which rely on organic senses techniques such as chemical ligation to produce peptides in high yield. After that, we have post-translational modification. And I remember we spent a week on this topic and explain this topic in much detail. So I hope many students have this topic on their fingertips. So can I ask questions from you guys? Anyone wants to join me? post-translational modification. The protein works after the post-translational modification when we have different types of attachment of different chemicals, different uh, compounds, and also the deletion of different chemicals and compounds. So you guys remember this topic? Anyone? Do we have Aman, Aman yes, Safir here? <laughs> Jesus. Aman, do you remember we just spend much time on this topic to understand and repeat again and again because it's very important. Did you remember? Do we have GR with us? What's her name? I don't remember. I'm sorry. GR is with us. Aman Safir. Okay, I forgot the name. Noor. There was a guy, Noor, I remember. Noor is here. Uh, Umar. Okay. I forgot the name. Yes, sir. <coughs> Umar. Okay, man. Uh, do you remember? Sir, what are you? Yes, sir. Post translation. Yes, sir. Modification. Did you remember that? We spent much time. So, what is pol uh, yes, phosphorylation? Sir, phosphorylation may sir phosphate group attached with that. Very good. Phosphate group attached with serine, uh, tyrosine, I remember, right? And threonine, three main amino acids. Mm -hmm. The phosphate group usually attached with the serine, tyrosine, and threonine. And it can attach on both sides, on <coughs> uh, sometimes on C-terminal and sometimes on N-terminal. Okay, did you remember uh, phosphoregulation? 
it has role phosphorylation where we have the role of phosphorylation remember i think so you it, uh, it help in cell growth cell, yes cell it helps cycle, in cell, cell cycle and cell growth you guys can growth, open your registers cycle, where you just uh, have uh, lectures yeah 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 man ji umar signal transduction and uh, cell signaling okay apoptosis also you guys can open your registers or copies notebooks where you just noted the lectures okay it's fine and what about glycosylation glycosylation uh, so in uh, glycosylation uh, uh, glucose or a group of carbohydrate yes. carbohydrates attached to the uh, serine right. and uh, asper aspartame All right covalent attachment of oligosaccharides so and it helps of... in this yes man you can it helps it. in the stability and fold, folding and distribution of the proteins very good yes glycosylation is the covalent attachment of oligosaccharides and addition of glycosyl group at aspergine and serine and threonine and it helps for the in the folding of protein threonine. correct folding of protein conformational changes of the protein distribution of protein in the cell and organism and most importantly stability and activity of the proteins so the anyone proteins. else anyone else okay umar you can uh, mute your mic anyone else want to share what is n linked glycans remember anyone else n linked glycans okay i forgot the names actually talia talia is from your class yeah sure beta aap name pehle beta apna bataya kare please apna naam pehle beta bataya kare ji ji hamsa so isme n group jo hai wo arginine ke sath aur asper aspergine arginine ke sath attach karta hai aspergine ke sath attach karta hai yes very good attachment of nitrogen to the aspergine or arginine side chains so it will be n linked glycans very good beta and what about o linked glycans anyone else except hamsa hamsa ehsan anyone else muniza muniza is from your class muniza maksood yusra ramin fatima aisha anyone okay o linked glycans i remember and fatima जी बेटा आपका नाम फातमा नूर जी बेटा व्हाट इज ओ लिंक्ड ग्लाइकंस ओ लिंक्ड ग्लाइकंस में बेसिकली हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप सीरीन और थीनिन के साथ अटैच होना है वेरी गुड हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप सीरीन अटैच विद सीरीन और थायोनीन एंड आफ्टर दैट व्हाट इज फास्फोग्लाइकंस फास्फोग्लाइकन में फास्फेट ग्रुप अटैच हो जाता है yes the attachment of phosphate group at the serine amino acid is known as phosphoglycans and then we have c linked glycans that it is a very rare form and sugar is attached to the carbon at tryptophan side group right anyone else this want to discuss ubiquitination Ubi ubiquitination is based on the addition of polypeptides we discuss in detail in our class about e1 e2 e3 enzymes right ubiquitin group small protein attached for the destruction of protein or you can say engulfment of protein or degradation of protein it is ubiquitination then we have s nitrosylation that is nitrosyl group attached to protein right nitric oxide compound is also involved in this one it is a chemical messenger react with free cysteine to form s nitrothioles okay you have to methylation the attachment of methyl group acetylation the attachment of acyl group hydroxylation and all these proteolysis we already discussed so these are the basic concepts of post translational modification that we studied detail in detail in our classroom okay so what is essential amino acids and non essential amino acids non essential amino acids are those amino acids that can be made by humans and so it is not so we don't need to eat 
those amino acids in our diet but essential amino acids we have to take in our diet if we will not take in our diet that amino acids maybe we have some problems so that are known as the essential amino acids anyone remember we just generate a formula to memorize the essential and non essential amino acids right anyone remember essential amino acids a c g t s t and sorry essential amino acids h i l m p t v and non essential amino acids a c g p s t remember guys we yes. also have methylation alkylation glutamylation and lipo lipolation sulfation we also studied all these biotinylation also so you also have you guys have to recall all these concept from your notebooks protein are the complex system again and again we have proteins proteins and proteins because this fourth title is proteomics and we are, i also mentioned some links here so you guys can study more from there then proteins can be classified into different like globular protein membranous protein fibrous protein simple proteins conjugated proteins derived proteins what is simple proteins on hydrolysis they yielded only the amino acids and small car carbohydrate compounds examples are albumin globulin glutelins and etc that protein these proteins are also known as homoproteins and only have amino acids these are known as simple proteins then we have another classification that is conjugated proteins these are simple proteins combined with some known protein material in the body for example nucleoproteins glycoproteins phosphoproteins hemoglobins right remember so these are conjugated proteins and these are also known as heteroproteins like in sim simple proteins are also known as homoproteins and conjugated proteins are also known as heteroproteins and have known protein portion as a glycoprotein and chromoprotein etc then we have derived proteins these proteins derived from simple or conjugated proteins by physical or chemical means by the denaturing of the protein or maybe the attachment of any group the word derived in actually explains from where this classification come from this classification came from simple and conjugated protein that's proteins that are i think i have problem with my internet okay everyone is listening me aman safir please man report do you guys get my voice anyone please yes sir oh thank you thank you yes sir so derived proteins the word derived in actual explains from where it came so the derived proteins came from simple proteins and conjugated proteins again we have simple proteins conjugated proteins and glycoproteins the glycoproteins are the proteins that covalently bind one or more carbohydrate unit to a polypeptide backbone then we have chromo chromoproteins they are proteins that contains color prosthetic group remember anyone want to discuss this one chromoprotein have colored prosthetic group for example hemoglobin myoglobin and it has one or more than one sometimes four heme groups chlorophyll which bind a porphyrin porphyrin ring with a magnesium item at its center okay so these are our chromo proteins chromo mean color derived from the word color and then we have the proteins that have colored prosthetic group and we already discussed what is prosthetic group prosthetic group is a known protein part that helps protein to function properly then we have phospho phosphoproteins and uh, this phosphoprotein we have phosphoric acid to attach with serine and thionine and and helps to structure and structure and function of the protein so this protein usually pre present in tooth dentin ah, i remember i remember we discussed the shape of tooth in our classroom with milk and egg yolk and different types of these generally they have structural functions such as tooth uh, everything is written here also you can read it from here too on the basis of their shape proteins may be divided into two classes fibrous proteins and globular proteins so fibrous proteins they have primarily mechanical and structural functions providing support to the cell as well as the whole organism these proteins are insoluble in water and they contain both internally and 
on their surface many hydrophobic protein amino acids the presence of their surface of hydrophobic amino acids facilitates their packing into very complex supramolecular structures that is fibrous proteins that is that helps in mechanical and structural functions and gives support to the cell and the organism hydrophobin long is involved in this one maybe we discuss here somewhere okay no we don't have hydrophobin but i remember we discussed it in our classrooms so hydrophobin has long filaments and sheets with secondary structure same like secondary structure and has alpha carotene remember everyone then we have fibroin maybe i have somewhere yes we have fibroin it is produced by the spider and insects an example is that produced by the silk worm that is per, uh, fibrin proteins usually produced by usually and mostly produced by the insects and spiders in the webs of spiders and silk worm of also then we have collagen the term collagen indicates not a single protein but a family of structurally related at least 29 different types which constitute the main protein component of connective tissues the extracellular scaffolding of multicellular organisms in vertebrates they represent about 25 to 30% of the proteins that is collagen and this main component is the connection of the tissues it helps to connect the tissues in vertebrates it has 25 to 30% of all the proteins present in all the tendons organic matrix of bone also in cartilage and cornea of eye fibers of skin tensile strength all includes in this collagen i remember we discussed this in detail in our classroom so this time we just touched the topics so we can have the revision what we already studied then we have alpha alpha carotene alpha carotene remember everyone we discuss that what alpha carotene is and where it usually constitutes in nails in claws in beaks in hooves in horns in hairs in wool and then we also i remember we also solved the query then why wool is so soft and why the beak is so hard i hope you guys remember okay i maybe i mentioned somewhere the different stiffness and flexibilities of these structures is the consequences of a number of disulfide bonds that contribute together with other binding forces to stabilize the structure and this is the reason why wool keratins which have a low number of disulfide bonds are flexible soft and extensible unlike claw and beak so we have the answer here also i also mentioned the link for your study you can have a detailed notes in this link that is not from me from other guys but it's a very good notes then we have elastin elastin has the elasticity of skin and blood red blood cells the protein provides elasticity to the skin and blood vessels a consequence of its random coiled structure that differs from the structure of alpha carotene and collagen then we also discuss i remember we also discussed in class about hydrogen bonding a bit and uh, uh, homology modeling threading and uh, ab abinishio we discussed all these already aman can you please tell me which topics we already cover so we can go far further aman safir wakaru labas okay aman safir sir aman safir khud nahi hai class mera okay who you are ji sir asad sir asad can you please tell me do we touch all the topics we discussed in class or i miss someone in revision I don't remember. Maybe the, we are the topic discussed in the class. Okay, very good, very good. So actually, we have limitation on this software that our class may our class will be only of forty minutes. So I will try to summarize the topic in thirty minutes, and then we have a ten minutes question session. Okay. So next time we have. Okay, I have a gift from Zoom. I don't know what it is. Running out of time. It's a gift. we have removed the 40 minute time limit on your group meeting love it thank you to zoom okay i just explain and i think zoom also hearing what i am saying to you guys so we are not in the privacy room anyhow so i will try my best to summarize the topic in 30 minutes then we have 10 minutes of question session and in next class inshallah taala we will have 
a specific topic this is just a reunion so because we have we meet after a gap of maybe 2 months and you guys did a really great job in your assignments i really appreciate it and i have information i i don't know it's fake or original one but i heard that your mid exam is these assignments evaluation of these assignments so i wish good luck to all of you anyone has any question please ask one by one with your name actually i am also new in this zoom so maybe i have some problems to face with you okay anyone has any question please we have 28 students with us in this class and uh, in total how many we have vakas wasim abbas how many students we have in total okay you guys just listening to me i think you don't you are not attentive so total 28 28, 28 i know man 28 present here how much we have in total in our class 58 or 65 the ranjan keh raha hai 50 hai 50 okay maybe 50 oh, it's mean 50% class we have okay etsham liaqat did you get something today hello yes sir did you get something asad and asad please mute your mic etisham liaqat did you get yes, today's sir. lecture mahnoor yes, yes. sir any question okay maybe she don't want to speak okay so i think we should have to finish this class i hope you guys will learn something in next class and you already get some points in this class i will upload this regarding to the channel as per university instruction and also on your portal so if you guys miss something you can recall and the guys who cannot attend this session can have a look to our lecture any question we have few minutes back any question no sir thank you so much thank you thank you so do we have to disconnect this call okay yes sir okay thank yes, sir thank you thank you to everyone thank you for thank you thank you everyone. thank you can anyone tell me how to disconnect this call who is regular on zoom sir leave kar de from where i have to leave सर ऊपर ऑप्शन आ रहा है एंड फ्रॉम हियर यू कैन सी माय स्क्रीन यस सर यस सर फ्रॉम हियर यस सर ओके ओके एंड मीटिंग फॉर ऑल थैंक यू